Hey guys, welcome back to another Game Maker Roundup, where we take a look at cool things going on around the Game Maker community. If you're new to the area, my name's Steven, and I'm glad that you found your way here. This video is going to be a bit different from previous Game Maker Roundups in that I'll mainly be focusing on things recently announced by the Game Maker team in regards to their plan, the roadmap plan for 2022. If you've watched previous Game Maker Roundup videos, then you may notice a bit of a difference in the location here. Uh, and like Game Maker, change happens, and the change for myself today is a barren white room with a dash of echo in it. But that should be okay, right? Well, anyway, are you guys ready? Because now's the time to take a glance at the past and stare to the future. First off, Game Maker Studio 2 is no more. Instead, we now have Game Maker, just Game Maker. It took a couple of decades to get there, but it finally happened. We got ourselves a prequel. The change seems to indicate a doing away with new major versions of Game Maker. This would mean that people no longer need to ask when Game Maker 3 is coming out, but I'm not totally confident that that won't still happen. Along with the name change has also come a web domain change. Gone is yoyogames.com and here to stay and play is GameMaker.io. Does this mean YoYo Games moved their headquarters from Dundee, Scotland to the island of Rodriguez? No, it really doesn't. Some think that the Game Maker team is trying to make things sound more hip and cool. And others fear that it might sound a bit too hip and cool. Nevertheless, it does get to the point while sounding hip and cool. The main landing page and marketplace have already been moved over, while the Game Maker community forum has yet to be transferred. Also worth noting is that yoyogames.com will continue to redirect to the new domain, so if habit leads you there, you don't need to worry about being offered cookies from a rich Nigerian prince. Now, if you already feel swamped by change, well, brace yourselves, there's more. Drag and Drop has been rebranded as GML Visual. The Game Maker team has made this change to clarify the fact that Drag and Drop really has been GML all along. New projects will no longer ask between GML or drag and drop at the very start. Instead, new scripts and events will ask if you want to use GML or GML Visual. If you're committed to one or the other, you can set the default choice for this in GameMaker settings. Now, as for a bit of news which absolutely nobody cares about, GameMaker now has native support for video playback. Seriously though, this has been a long time in coming. The video player works by loading frames to a surface, which can then be used to manipulate it and draw videos as you like within your game. So you could choose to do a full screen playback or simulate a TV broadcasting important news. But these changes and updates haven't been without setbacks, as sickness hit the GameMaker team delaying progress on upcoming updates. Russell mentioned this on the GameMaker forum, which was followed by a warm response from many users, encouraging the team to rest up and get well. Now, that brings us to the main part of today's episode. On April 20th, YoYo Games announced that they would be talking about plans for GameMaker in 2022. And the following day, they delivered. Kinga hosted the discussion with senior project manager Gavin and Russell, now the head of GameMaker. After reviewing GameMaker's progress over the past year, they laid out their vision for 2022 and beyond. Seriously, there is like quite a bit of content here that I wasn't really sure what to present first, but let's go. A long-term stable build was announced for those needing stability over futures. LTS builds will be supported for two-year cycles and focus on only receiving key critical updates. Triggers are also incoming, making it easier to set off more intricate events as objects intersect with them. This would allow you to do stuff like not only know when an object enters an area, but also when it leaves. Triggers will not only support basic shapes, but also custom polygons for more advanced needs. A built-in editor for particles is also on the way, allowing for particle systems to be visually crafted rather than hand-coded through Gmail or externally created with third-party tools. Particles will be a new asset type within the IDE, similar to objects, sprites, and other asset resources. A new user interface system is aimed to make it easier to create UI elements without having to build things from scratch. The UI elements will be customizable so they can fit with the style of your own projects. A new GUI layer is also coming which will allow you to add GUI elements directly within the room editor. Now before continuing, let's take a quick break, shall we? Welcome back. FMOD, an apparent fan favorite of at least a few people, is making its way to be officially supported as GameMaker looks to enhance its audio capabilities. This will provide more options for real-time audio effects such as reverb, chorus, and much more. And the IDE's visual audio editor is also getting expanded to better assist in modifying audio samples. 
As for online games, a simplified way to implement multiplayer is set to allow people to quickly get things up and running over the net. So, anyone ready for Click the Clown I.O.? I'm not. Opera's GXC is coming to mobile devices, allowing games to be playable on any browser for Android or iOS devices without having to go through Google or Apple stores. This feature is expected to drop soon in an upcoming GameMaker beta. The marketplace will be getting a much needed overhaul with extended functionality. In Gavin's words, completely remake him. It should become easier than ever to find relevant assets. Wish lists, as well as gifting to friends or enemies, will also be possible. The user rating systems will be improved, as well as interactions between users and publishers. I'm personally rooting for the marketplace, so I'm happy to hear this. Guys, there's still quite a bit more to talk about what's going on here, like prefabs, an asset generator, a new runtime, computer, compute shaders. Man, there's a lot going on here. So instead, I'm going to encourage you to go watch the Game Maker update video for yourself. And after that, you could check out the Q&A going on in the community forums, where you can ask questions to the GameMaker team about the 2022 roadmap. Many users have already been submitting questions and getting some great feedback, so I encourage you to jump on over there if you'd like an even lower lowdown on 2022 and beyond. Well guys, that's it for this GameMaker Roundup. I hope that you've enjoyed it and found it to be a brighter part of your week. You can find links to related articles of interest in the video description below, and be sure to check out the quick gifs at the end of this video to see more of the cool things being made by the broader gaming community. And if you do see any that you do really like, you can find a link to the original tweet in the description below and maybe get a, give it a like or a retweet or even share some kind words with the original creator. It might be kind of a cool thing to do. Well guys, until next time, blessings.